Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in Equestria War. Right now, as you can see though, we're having a pretty good time with the Quillian Republic, in which we lost a lot of guys, I'm not going to lie about it, I mean, we've lost a lot of dudes, but compared to them, we're doing pretty darn well, and the Hatsune Republic is just about to go bye-bye. Now, I can't remember if I actually read this one or not, um, Recover Air Industry, which I think I did, so if you want to do that, please go ahead. But, Flying Over Maya, I think I read as well that one yesterday, so we're going to continue with that focus. Now, and let's see what happens, because we're doing pretty darn well. I'm not... Oh, they're gone. Look at that. Draft dodging. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Nothing can be done about it. We should arrest anyone found invading the draft. Or a pay raise for the enlisted soldiers is perhaps in order. That's okay with me. Usually that always works, but you know what? Now that I said that, it's probably not. Which is unfortunate. But oh well. Um, let's see. We've lost a lot of guys. Uh, we've got a couple comments to go through, such as... Someone says... Oh, oh we're still, are we mobilizing? Oh, hmm. Okay, well, whatever. Okay, whatever. Cool. Uh, such as use field hospitals. So, yeah, I probably... Oh, there goes those guys too. Great. I should probably use field hospitals, honestly. Yeah, we could really use them. Aquila's gone? Very good. Very good. You're going to get encircled and die, probably. But whatever. Uh, yeah, I should probably really use field hospitals. Field hospitals, especially for a minor nation like us, would be very, 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 very beneficial. So, my bad. I'm not sure what... How these guys are trying to move around here. It's not very organized, and it's so disorganized that they're going to get encircled and get killed off. But I don't think we really are going to take out too many more people in this campaign, realistically. I don't think we really had the, uh, really need to, honestly. Just because, oh, we sunk a convoy. Nice. Cool. Awesome, awesome. And someone also says that, um, to get the kingdom, I should have gone with the warlords and opposed Kemmer Sky. So, I don't know. Like, I, I really don't know that much about Equestria War. I really should play it more because it's a very, 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 very well done mob. But yeah, I guess that's the way, because we know we can always oppose them when we begin. We support the President Marshal this time. We can always plot against them, so it is what it is. And also, as someone said, there's usually high tensions between the Griffonian Republic as well as the Quillian Republic, especially after the Griffonian Empire capitulates. So, uh, I guess it is what it is. So, yeah, I guess it's just destined to happen. A lot of aggression between each these two groups. Ah, yeah, the draft reform proves it effective. If you want to know about that, please go ahead. Thank you. we got some stability wars, which we could actually really, really, really use. Which is very nice. Very, very nice. Also, do we have the support artillery on our guys? I don't... Yes. That's not enough. 585? Not enough. Not enough support artillery. Cool. Before they capitulate, 1.6 million. Actually, 1.8 million versus 400 some thousand overall. Calgary ratio about 4 to 1. Not bad. That's pretty good. I'll take that. I'll definitely take that. How do we have so much here, man? There we go. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Lots of trucks. We're not even using that many trucks. But we'll use them anyways, because we can. Cool. Good job, guys. Good job. And we got him. Look at that. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. So now we can do a couple more focuses, too. Hopefully, at least. <sighs> yes. Good. Good, good. Jolly good. Um, anything else here? Not really. We could pillage bank vaults. But, oh. I guess we got rid of tutelage and stuff like that, too. Well, cool. A little bit ahead of time. Let's do a streamline line because we can. And you guys, we did, I think, oh, looking pretty darn good. Not gonna lie, looking pretty darn good. Flying high over my up was not bad. But let's continue with Tricolor of Griffenheim. It is done. Griffenheim is ours and the despotic, oppressive empire has been beaten. Three cheers for successful revolution and liberation. Hoorah! So now we get 100 more political power, which means nothing. We get the event return to Griffenheim and move the capital to Griffenheim, which would be very, very good. And let's go ahead and grab this one because I usually prefer that one. A couple more divisions. Ah, fly high of a Maya. Very good, very, very good. Ah, very good, nice. There you go. And Hell Quill, huh? The River Federation do be looking kind of thick. Even though we might want to plan against Wing Body instead. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We will definitely see what happens. Um, yeah, I don't know. Pillage. We could do that, but. 1015 River lands Hoofball. Very good. And what was this one, actually? So. Uh, move capital, and we get a lot of cores, and we can occupy, or can core a lot of different states, and former nations, if the average compliance is above 40%, which is actually pretty darn nice. And fate of the last emperor, fate of the scheming nobility. Unlike Grover the Sex, most of the nobility participated in the foiling of the revolution of 978, such as the Duchess of Strawberry, Gabriella Eagleclaw. The crimes cannot be forgiven like we would the child emperors. They should be stripped other titles, or stripped other lives. Oh, yes. I love lives. Well, keep increasing that for now because we probably don't have enough. Uh, actually, we, oh wow, we got a lot of guns. We got a lot. I mean, right now, equipment's looking very good. Like, I'll be honest, equipment's looking extremely good for us right now. We're still building a bunch of roads because we love roads here on this channel. But we return to Griffinheim. 
Vic fi victory finally after a long exile ends and we're back to where the republic was born griffenheim now that the city's ours and resistance has been quelled we need to decide what kind of republic wish we wish to become should we strive for more centralization or decentralization should we reform our administration there are many questions that must not be tackled alliance of griffin nations decentralization is the only way to lead us to near collapse in the past well that's not bad master impact goes down we will stay true to the ideals that led us in 978 which sounds like the thing that we want to do and we join the Griffonian Research Network. Decentralization. Okay. Annexation gas goes up. Ooh, I don't know then. Uh, an alliance of Griffin nations. Alliance of nations, approved relations, same opinion. Okay. Um. Hmm. Now that we're back where we are at. How much centralization do we want? I kind of want an alliance. Federated Paris is sick, man. Sick. That's not bad. An alliance. Decentralization only led us near the collapse in the past. We get more centralization. Um, That seems kind of good to do. I do like decentralization, though. We don't have that many puppets either. I do like the alliance, just in case. Ah, alliance and nations, why not? And then we'll do fate of the last emperor. The last emperor, Grover the Sixth, was only a child, but he cannot be excused from the crimes of his dynasty, region, and empire. While execution is off the table, he cannot be allowed to remain in Griffinheim with all his ties and powers. We can liberate him as a free citizen, or perhaps exile him. I heard a question is quite nice at this time of year. The nobility's fate. The nobility. The traitors and petty criminals who defeated the Republicans during the Revolution and have continued to oppress the people of Griffonia ever since. Most dukes, counts, and barons of the old Griffonian Empire have been arrested and imprisoned by the Republican military. Although we were not quick enough to save minor nobles or trial, many were found lynched on street corners and on makeshift gallows across the Republic. Pent up anger against the nobility has erupted. Both Democrats and Socialists have called for the execution and trials of these traitors to our nation. Schnabel Sunglider, the leader of the Social Democratic faction of the National Republican Party, has declared that according to the principles of liberty, democracy, and prosperity, these traitorous nobles must serve justice for their crimes. However, not all Republican politicians are so hostile to the old Griffonian nobility. Henry Kingfeather, ever the conservative and pragmatist, has declared that the nobility must be judged in accordance to the laws and morals of the times, not according to their vengeances and bloodlust. Although Kingfeather's beliefs are not popular among the common citizen, Republican citizen, many right-wing figures and former appeals service citizens have announced Kingfeather's belief to save the Republic. We might just have to do the unthinkable and keep these chairs alive. Justice must be done for the crimes. Strip them of their titles. Now, I'm thinking if I'm going down a line, if I were going to go supremacist, I'd just kill them all off. Ever going, was it left wing or socialist? Just left wing. I'll go kill them all off. Um, but I guess technically this is the right wing. They're not, but we're not aligned. The central wing, we would keep be peaceful with them. So <sighs> I'm feeling like I want to do what the Union did to the Confederates after the first. Well, I guess the only American Civil War of the time that's recording. Um, I want to. I don't want to say we want to give them amnesty because that's not true. Hmm. <clears throat> And, but we'd be, if we let them live, they, they could come back, but at this point, I don't think they will. So, justice must be done for the crimes. I mean, some of these people definitely need to be killed off, but... Ooh. I'm, I'm, I'll say it like this. We are going to play this campaign again someday. And you're going to have to remind me that we take the other option. Because eventually, we will come back and win and beat the Griffonian Empire as someone else... Not camera sky, but someone else. So, I think for now, we're going to strip them of their titles. Next time, please remind me when we play the Griffonian Republic. Hold me to this. If this channel still exists in the future. We gotta go and just get rid of them. But, and the corrupt Arcanite. While we have no problem with the origin or organized faith of Griffonia itself, the Arcanite has become even more corrupt and vile in recent years. We must reshuffle the three Archons in their position to make sure they're not Imperial Lackeys. The fate of the Child Emperor. In the weeks since we have taken Griffinheim, the hotlands have been largely stabilized. Local Republican movements have been encouraged, and Alexander Kamerskai has been met, or has met, with numerous Democratic and Communist leaders. However, despite our efforts to reform a new Republic and reverse the failures of 978, there's still an option on every Griffin's mind. The Child Emperor. Griffin VI was seized by the Republican spies during the assault on Griffinheim to prevent a bloody lynching along the lines of the Regency Council's bloody murders in 978, however. Since then, he's languished in a prison cell below his former palace. He's been provided with bread, water, and an agreeable room and condition, but still, even he asked what is to become of the Emperor. Such a question has been asked many a time in the Republican Parliament. Schnabel Sunglider, despite his commitment to democratic principles and Republican unity, has demanded we enact justice against the young Emperor for the unforgivable crimes of his father and the crimes him and his vile regent plotted to commit across all Griffonia. However, 
Some glider was soon in silence by Kimmer Sky himself, who stated that he would spread no children's blood for the purposes of sheer vengeance and carnage. Heinrich Kingfeather, ever the pragmatist, has declared that Corvus VI must be liberated as a citizen of the Republic to show that we are better than the corrupt and twisted ways of the Imperials. Kingfeather's proposal would see the Emperor stripped of his title so he and his lineage would bear no threat to the Republic, though another option has arisen. Eric K Krieger, a Republican industrialist and conservative, has suggested we simply send Grover the Sixth to Equestria. They would simply not use him as a political asset and teach him in the ways of friendship and harmony. After a heated debate among proponents of Krieger's exile plan and proponents of giving the young Grover citizenship, the final verdict has, was reached. Liberate him as a, as a citizen of the Republic. Exile him to the diarchy of the Equestria. Ooh. We did forget the other, some of the other people. I think we're, we gotta be consistent here, right? We gotta liberate him as a citizen. Liberate. And the House of Kemerskai. House of Kemerskai is still alive and should be judged independently of the rest of the nobility. Kemerskai shall visit the Baron, August Kemerskai, his nephew, to decide the fate of the House. Archon's replacements. It is clear that we cannot allow Eros, Arion, and Proteus to participate in a religious process any longer. All of them have been judged as traitors to the Griffonian Republic and to a process of an imperial, impartial faith. The new question, however, is who shall be the replacements? A faction of Republicans led by civil servant Olaf Rusgen has advocated for restoring an impartial temple and appointing only the most theological and talented prelates and priests to fill the role of the new Archons. A prominent priest of Boreas from Felizia, Mat Beimold, is the favorite of Rusgen's faction. And he would he take power? He would be crowned as Aurum the Sixth, Archon of Boreas. However, we have taken issue with Aurum the Sixth and his so called impartiality. Walter Amarich, confidant of Schnabel, Sunglad, and prominent Republican general, has declared that any impartial priest is one who would sell off the Republic to counter revolutionaries at a moment's notice instead. Amarich has advocated for the crowning of Arthur Klempner of Whitetail, who claims is more loyal to the Republican and Democratic cause. Klempner's reformism has been refused as instructed by many in the temples, but he's the perfect Archon for the Republic's cause. Would he come into power? We would become Vulgaris I, the Archon of the Common Griffin. And point impartial archons, re loyal Republican archons. Well, this is not a line, so I think we gotta go that way for now. The birth of Grover the Sixth. Cameron Scott looked at the young grip in front of him, feeling how his age weighed down on him, like a yoke made out of rocks. Just a child, not even fifteen years of age, yet standing firmly in his orange and pure robes and with the crown on his head, he was afraid. Cameron Scott had seen too much to miss it, but he remained standing in front of the throne, meeting his gaze with one pack with so much fear, anger, pride, determination, and defiance. Well, revolutionary, the boy said, are you here to see how an emperor dies? His voice almost broke on the last syllable, even with his firm last stand, it was a child's voice. Ares mercy, no, he says, sighing. Instead, he walks over to further away, where the chair stood grabbing it and pulling it up to the throne, sitting down on it and looking at the at boy. Five and ten minutes passed before the young Grover slowly sat down himself. I'm sorry, Kimmer Sky told the young crown prince, his claws clasped together. You were four when your father died and your childhood ended, weren't you? At eleven years is a long time to be made into something you're not. I know what I am, traitor, Grover the Sixth Fat. I'm the rightful emperor of the Griffonia, and I'll never be anything else. Exactly, Kimmer Sky agreed sadly, supping Grover in his tracks. Grover the doctor or Grover the gardener. Grover the baker, maybe. That never could happen. You never got to choose. Never got to make your own life. You must. You never got to live. Stopping himself, Cameron Sky sighed. Hate me if you must. How can I be anything but an old monster to you? But maybe one day, when you're older, you will understand or not, and you'll still hate me. But then, at least, uh, that is a choice you can make. He has been liberated from his shackles. Because we're just trying to liberate ourselves from our shackles, right? The first election. The election has come. A truly historic moment for all of us. Now we only need to await the results. We'll. There's another focus tree. Well, that's kind of cool, actually. Elections to see what will happen. A visit to Vinim. Each one of its steps echoed in the vacant halls. Cameron Sky walked through the estate of his family, where he had once lived, worked, and played. The house was decrepit and dying. Paintings of Cameron Sky's father, the great Baron Aldus, were torn and lopsided, a testament to the fall of the once noble family. House Cameron Sky was dying, and it saddened him that the revolution was a cause. He still remembered the old days where he drove along the city of Griffenheim with Grover the Fourth and received his Medal of Honor. Those were better days, wherein the fight for a better Griffoni had not yet torn the continent apart. But he was not here to reminisce about the old days. His nephew, August II, has been held here under house arrest for weeks after the revolution. It was Kemerskai's duty to speak with them once last time and judge him fairly and honorably. Uncle, August spoke, addressing Kemerskai with cold fear in his eyes. Are you ready to kill me as you did my father and his father before him, or are you here to speak to me into submission? I'm not here to fight you, Kemerskai spoke, sitting down across from his nephew, but if you continue to peddle that lie that it causes the destruction of your family, you would have to leave me no choice. Liar, August screeched, forgetting that he was speaking to the President Marshal of the Republic. It was your crony who shot my father on the streets of Griffenheim, and you yourself who ordered the execution of my grandfather, your own father. Cameron Sky began to speak again, but was overshadowed by his screaming nephew. It was you who cursed our family to the game rot, and brought an end to our noble position. Now we are the dudes of Vinin, the wayward sons of the Imperial Houses, and you come to me and expect Republican justice? Expect me to kneel to your demands and become your puppet? He slouched down in his chair again with a sigh, spoke for the final time. Do what you must. If I go to the gallows, I will do so as a knight of the House of Camera Sky and the Empire, not a screaming whelp. Be gone, nephew. I do not wish to see you again. There are places for all of us in the Republic. We gotta be consistent, right? Well, maybe not.
But we'll see what happens. Permission flying, very good. And grab some of that too, because he can. Yeah, I don't want to pillage the vaults, man. I really don't want to. I'm good with that one, though. I'm okay with that one. Excavation? More excavation, because we love excavation. All we need is more rubber, which no one has. Okay, then. Um, yeah, y'all keep doing this stuff. That, that's good stuff to do. That's good stuff. Oh my gosh, how many factories? There's, there's so many factories, man. So many factories. We definitely do gotta do some more tank stuff, though. Let's be real. We gotta do some more tank stuff, for real, at least. Oh, we need more rubber. The first election. I, I, I don't know how long this is gonna be. I don't know. We'll see, I guess. Braving the Cloudberry Winters. The Cloudberry Winters were some of the harshest in all of Griffonia. And even though we've been here for some 30 years, many of our troops still have not acclimated. It is time to truly begin winter training so that our armies can defend against unprepared Imperial forces from the south, just as Cloudberry did during our assault. Look at that manpower. Beautiful. We're getting coring quite a few more stuff. A few more places. Not bad. Oh my goodness. Don't, oh, we've been looking. These ships are not good. They're really just not good. Oh, why are you... Oh, God. Mm. Elections, though. Elections are always nice to have, right? Well, maybe not always, but they serve a purpose. Um, there you go. Oh, Jesus Christ, these are so bad. Uh, why am I even making these? These are just so bad. We need, we need, the next thing we're going to do research is capital ships. we got to get more capital ships here. All right, and another one done. Thank you very much. And we'll start doing that stuff. Wait, hold on, hold on. I did say we do this, though. Uh, oh, I should have researched this earlier. Oh, my goodness, it's so bad. Alright guys, go ahead and train and election. Our great President Ma should come and skies this side that the Republic is ready for its first official general election. Who are you? With his resignation, oh, many popular politicians have scrambled and tried to gain the support of the populace. The two most popular ones are Heinrich Kingfeather and Schnabel Sunglider. Heinrich is a firm believer in the political neutrality, believing that it would further advance our economic wealth and political stability if our nation decided to stay out of foreign affairs. He also supports the cutting military and mil welfare budgets to ensure that the economy is balanced, though this has earned him scrutiny from the harmonists, who believe he is betraying the principle of prosperity by planning out to cut benefits. On the other claw, Schnabel, a young revolutionary, firmly believes in the ideals of the Republican Revolution. He argues that a stance of neutrality would, be le would mean leaving defenseless griffins in other countries to the fate of being oppressed by monarchs, dictators, and the like. Sunglad is a firm believer in the social democratic... Uh, democratic ideals of the revolution, and supports a mixed economy with heavy welfare spending to grant prosperity to the poor. The conservatives, however, claim that the state could never pay for this ambitious plans, and yet it was a heated debate, and yet very short election campaign. And the results are finally in. Oh, I don't know, man. Now, uh, we gotta go into non line because I will play this again eventually. Uh, Harmony, I will play them eventually, but I just... I think I gotta go that way. Uh... Uh... Let's go inside that. Alright, let's see what I got... Oh, this is a lot of bad words going through my head. There's so much here. Oh, wow. Look at that. Expel the far right. Or no, no, NRP right. Or NPP right. I don't know. It's all NPP to me. NPP center left and right. Oh, God. TNO, why did you break me hurt? Um, Against the monarchies. Okay. So from what it looks like here, there's going to be another episode in this, which is totally fine with me. Totally, totally fine. So. President Kingfeather. P President Kingfeather, the pragmat pragmatic, conservative candidate, has won the Griffonian elections. His government will be a crucial ward against extremism, socialism, and monarchy as he builds a free market and a free society. Followed up with our duty to the Republic. There are many threats to the Constitution today. Socialist monarchist dictators. We must stand vigilant and uphold the Republic and his God given principles at all costs. Cool. The inauguration of Heinrich Kingfeather. The freedom that should be a, the epitome of the Griffonian Republic is that uh, of pursuing your own good in your own way as long as we as a society do not attempt to deprive others of the freedom through tyrannical government measures or impede their efforts to obtain it through overbearing regulations or oligarchy. And yet, the Griffonian Republic has forgotten this core tenet. War propaganda litters every street. Griffins live in poverty while we claim so much to support the welfare of the poor. And despite our best efforts to regulate the economy, our lands and cloudberries still remain a backwater. As your president, Heinrich Kingfeather, I pledge to restore the values of the people and the values of freedom. Both of the market and our political society, I repeat. We shall ensure freedom again as a core value of the Griffonian Republic. Freedom against socialist tyranny, freedom against the fascism of Piccolini, and the murderous dictators of the world, and freedom against any monarchic state that would seek to curtail our democracy for a hereditary autocracy. Our people call for a return to Kemersky, a return to the revolutionary spirit and populism, not the corrupt socialism of Astler, or the watered-down version of the same that Sunglider proposes, and I will give them that freedom. Freedom to work, to thrive, to go to any darn place in this Griffonian Republic and build a new future. From my days in Green Gate as a lawyer, to my days fighting with Kemersky and advocating for republicanism on the international stage, to my cabinet administration, when I saved the Republic from warlordism and monarchic restoration, I have been serving you, the people, and I will continue to do that until my dying day. Liberty, democracy, and prosperity. And I remember those of focus saying, or not a focus, but a comment saying that apparently historical is harmonist or harmony, so my bad. 
my bad. So, it is what it is at this point. So, uh, I like Otto Winberg. That's be pretty good. Um, how's compliance going? It's going actually very well. I'm considering lowering conscription level back down to you know all adult serve, but because they're twenty one percent, that looks looking really good. Total core population though is not very much. And Emperor's musings. Grover once meant to be styled Grover the Sixth has been sitting in his room for days now, only coming up for brief periods, and yet for Joanna. Or Johanna, yeah. Formerly a maid in the palace and now Grover's housekeeper, was still a marked improvement. Before he had been bitter and almost petulant, but now he had calmed down, becoming more level headed and indeed polite. He took walks nowadays, if only to the library, and on several occasions he interacted with people in the streets. When he came home, he went to the room and began reading through, and he did so for hours. The books he had loaned had not escaped attention, though books on law, economics, and especially a copy of the new constitution. The young Griffin seemed fully in the throes of the zeal that saw him reading into a small hours and only sleep for brief periods of time. As Johanna came in with his dinner, Grover looked to her and thanked her, something that once would have made her look over the moon, but now which was standard. She couldn't help but look over the books he had been reading, curious about what was going on. What are you reading? she asked Grover, who finished the bite of food in his mouth before wiping his beak and pointing it into. That old crow say, said I could be anything, he told her. And this thing here says every citizen of the Republic has the inalienable right to take part in the government. I'm a citizen. The old crow said so. I have a letter. If this word means anything, then I might not become emperor again, but I can run for president. Not the next election, or maybe even five or six elections time. I'm young. I've got time. He has given me a new life, and I will use it. For better or worse. <laughs> for better or worse. Yeah, I, you know what? I'm going to risk it. Screw it. We're gonna, oh, oh, we're to jump. Oh, that's a massive jump down. Oh, well, that's a huge jump. You know what we're going to do? We're going to collect all this manpower. Maybe I can just go spam this out first. Hey, we're done. Cool. Um, give us a little bit more. Maybe we'll go all the way and then cut it back down. This way we can save that manpower. Is it gamey? Oh, you bet it's gamey as all heck. But that's okay with us. President King Feather is going to help us out. Because right now we're making a massive army. Just one fat sausage army? Something. We're making something. Uh, free market economics. Ward off extremism. The Unity Plan. Oh, that's not bad. Silent Work Bird. I like that a whole lot. Um, supports some businesses. Free trade. I don't know about free trade, but I guess we'll do free market economics. Social democratic economic theories will inevitably fail, and the republic will collapse in a deep economic depression to reverse this. We must roll back these policies and begin capitalism. Brunhilde Bronstel. Oh, she's a revolutionary. Anis... A revolutionary seducer. You gonna get me excited in the wrong ways while we're making a video. Oh, baby. Anyways, um, yeah, why not? You know, I wanna get more tanks. We're probably not gonna get any tanks. But we'll see what happens. Purple plague. What is that? Purple plague. What is that? Do we need to put on masks or something? Uh oh, that's not good. Um, honestly, so we have one, two, three. It's already ten fifteen. We might as well just one, two, three, and get down to, to butcher. We're going. We're going. We're making heavy tanks. We're making them heavy. You know what we like here? We like them heavy, thick and heavy. Mmm. Oh, that's as much as we can do. Uh, that's a case. Can I make you guys any bigger? Oh, I gotta go support artillery. As much as I want to do anti-air, I gotta go with that one. Okay, so let's cut, start cutting this back down. Oh no, that was way too low. Extensive conscription. Oh, nice. Good. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Let's get some better screens too. And you know what? We're going to go way better screens. Let's get that too. Uh, you guys did a great job. Well, you did the best job you could. So, keep training. Keep training. Oh, Helco is going bye-bye. The Republic forever. Our Griffonian Republic faces many threats, even from within. On the international level, Wingbody, Aquilia, Prywin, and the Griffinstone lurk in the south, all waiting to strike at a Republic. The Solstice and Monarchists of the south plot in secret, making alliances and forging pacts against the Republic, wanting the vast riches of the heartland for themselves. Within our nation, Solstice strike at our decades of democracy, disregarding the principle of liberty with their beliefs and broad nationalizations and destruction of our free market capitalist system. Their policies would no doubt collapse our economy and weaken our democracy, allowing their smiley, charismatic leaders to slowly our Republic and abolish Republican rule under the false pretense of restoring order. We, the NRP, understand that what this Republic must become a constitutional republic, free from the evils of socialism, monarchy, or dictatorship, for constitution and liberty. Followed up with the support of small businesses. Instead of supporting large monopolies, we should work to support new businesses in the heartlands, which have been hindered by the oligarchic policies of the Imperials. The people must be able to create business from the ground up and work from slave to king with shrewd innovativeness and capitalism. How many more planes do we have? Any planes? Oh, baby boy, look at all those fighters. Oh, we got so many. Nothing's going to stop us here except ourselves. Oh, good. That's an already. That's awesome. There you go. Another ship, too? Great, great, great. I'm thinking about just going to war with the River Federation eventually, but we'll see. 
No? We don't go to war with them? Alright. Interesting. Good, 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 good. At this point, we can just go and do bing bong. Very good, very good. Free market economics, support some small business renos. That would be quite delightful, of course. And there goes Southwell, become subject of the River Federation. And we can't go to war with them, but the principles of capitalism. The economy of the Griffonian Republic has long been based on social democratic principles. When a camera sky's major goal was to create a Griffonian welfare state that would care for all Griffins and guarantee them a food a home, food, and family. However, the conservative economists, economists in the government of Heinrich Kingfeather predict that our nation will fall into economic collapse with too much welfare spending and that interest rates on Griffonian currency across the nation will spike. We cannot have this and must roll back welfare reforms instead of relying on meritocratic forces on the free market, which will ensure that all Griffins have a chance to achieve as much wealth as possible. There will be no more burdensome regulations on the people of the Republic, nor welfare programs that condemn Griffins and dec lives of decadence as a scrounge off government benefits. No, we will have a free market, capitalist economy, without the meddlings of socialism, where any Griffin can achieve his own dreams. Cool. I'm only doing that just to set ourselves up. Cool. And then open up trade. Oh, I don't want to do that one. But the greatest regret. President Marshall. President Marshall, hero. The amount of titles and honors that Cam Alexander Kamerskow was carting around at the moment was one that he could silently admit to himself was ridiculous. Still, they were evidence of what he had achieved in his life and did not deny the meaning behind him. It was just that right now he could have traded them all for even a modicum of greater confidence in himself. He walked up towards the large house, holding the bouquet of flowers in his claw, and silently murmured to himself with a little speech he had been planning on and off for years. If there was one thing he regretted about his long and story career, it was that he had fallen into the trap that so many great people fell into. The one where you work so hard to fulfill your duties that there was nothing left for yourself, only or for your family. He found her in the garden, busying herself with picking dead leaves from the rose bushes, and whether she didn't notice him or just ignored him, she didn't look up from it as he came to her. How was your day? she asked. Alexander finding himself trying to recall when it had become a mechanical response given out of habit. And why shouldn't it be? He glanced down at the bouquet, suddenly wanting to throw it away. It was such a pathetically inadequate way to be beg forgiveness for having all but ignored her for so many years. Duty, revolution, greater good, all those excuses felt like ashes in his mouth. In the end, it was the fact that he didn't respond that made her look up and see the bouquet. I, Alexander began, realizing he had completely forgotten the speech he had prepared. He was left simply holding the bouquet out to her stiffly. I've let you down, he managed to blurt out. I've been a bad husband for too long. I'm sorry, and I just hope I can make it up to you. If it's not too late, he asked, half expecting to have the bouquet thrown back in his face. Instead, she burst into tears and embraced him, leaving him to return to it and gently rocking his wife back and forth, telling her how much he loved her as she cursed out him for having taken so long. President Marshall, hero, to Tartarus with all those titles. The title he cared about right now was husband, no more, no less. From now on, my only duty is make you happy. But you can't make anyone else happy. They gotta make themselves happy, but, you know, it is what it is, you know. He's got duties to attend to. A lot of duties. But, open up trade. I don't like opening up trade, but I might actually cut it back down. But we'll see. Free trade between nations is one of the major principles of capitalism. We must allow for trade to flow, freely flow across our nation internationally and use our vast resources to uh, bargain with the other nations. We we'll captured somebody here. We have ways of making you talk, you filth. Absolute filth. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a lot of good things here going for us, actually. Um, go and do that as well. I might actually use APCs. We'll see. Get a lot of planes. And by getting a lot of planes, I mean... We must accord... Oh my goodness. We're going to accord so much more. Get a lot of that stuff too. Basic heavy artillery. It's not enough. It's literally not enough. And open up the trade. Harmony with Republican characteristics. That'd be kind of cool. And... Good. And let's go ahead and do... Privatize the mineral extraction uh, industry. Which we'll do very soon. We got hard tanks. Because we, we like them hard. The machine nest because that's fine as well. Um... Mineral extraction has for ages been under the control of the federal government, whether it be Cloudbear or Griffinheim. We must sell these industries off and give them to privately managed companies and businesses, who will manage it, of course, more effect efficiently and effectively. So yeah, I want to make sure we are, like, rubber independent here, so... Like, as you can see, we're really trying to gear up for a navy. A really good navy. And of course, a pretty good army too, so... And how much do we have? We're going to get up to 6%. Basically, we're going to reduce our... Man power by a third, which sucks. That actually really sucks. Machine nest. Oh, that was really fast. Nice. Greta. Yes, please. And what else? Uh, get some radar, because we want to throw them on our ships. That'd be great. Uh, yes, we get some more resource efficiency again, which would be very, very good. Ah, suicide pills. Yum, yum. Ah, 
heavy ship. Nice. Get, get the best heavy ship. And we're now out of manpower. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can agree with free trade. I'm going to go back to limited export. Sorry. Just because we want to make sure we're independent here. So, how's this looking? Look at that. That looks pretty good. Does that not look pretty good? That's looking so much better than it did before. So much better. Holy crap. That's so much better. Alright. And then, ward off extremism. We could probably do that. Or... Ah, the unity plan. We must now not use our newfound position to wreak havoc upon the bonds of the Empire that have existed for centuries, which should only hasten a counter-revolution against our rule. Instead, we must unify under common bonds. <clears throat> To build a better Grifonia. While radicals may demand blood and traitors may sneer at our efforts, unity is the only way forward to build peace in the Republic. Yes. Oh, and we got, we're getting a lot of tech done and I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it like McDonald's. What? Is that, is that the slogan? Yeah. 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 Um, after this one, ward off extremism. So socialists and their party become too powerful. It's time to deal with this new movement and expel socialists from the National Republican Party in the, same, in the name of ensuing party unity and stability. The necessary sacrifices, hundreds of pardons were granted and noble soldiers and citizens across the nation who had once served with the Grifonian Empire, even more than they were granted by the President Marshal Kemmer Sky. After his democratic reforms, civil servants from the Empire were quickly reassigned to all across the Republic and the nations they had once served, instead of rotting in the dungeons that the radicals would have had them in for the rest of their lives, from Angreva to Fethizia. <clears throat> The remaining nobles were freed. Given a slap on the claw and were welcomed into the Grafonian Republic in the name of unity, healing, and progress in response to the criticism from radical leftist elements of the National Republican Party, King Feather stated that their blind lust for vengeance has clouded their judgment for better Grafonia. According to King Feather and numerous politicians associated with the right NRP, Plan Unity would restore progress to Grafonia through systematic reconciliation, efforts with imperial politicians, along with industrial developments aided by contacts with nobles and industrialists across the former empire. Surely unity has been restored to the fragile republic and rational policy has been triumphed, or the vengeance of the Sun Glider and Asler. Excellent work, President Kingfeather. Nice. <clears throat> Reconcile with Akhenate. While Akhon the Seventh is gone, most pious griffins from the lowliest priest to the uh, greatest prelate believe the regime is ungodly and unfaithful. Realizing that a puppet Archon will not change anything, King Feathers announced the government shall pursue a policy of reconciliation with the Akhenite and the gods themselves, whatever that entails, of course. And let's keep going with this stuff, which is very good, and help us continue to put down even more and more resistance, because now we're out of manpower, which is very bad for us. But, you know, it is what it is, of course. <clears throat> um, it's all going down, which is nice. Uh, let's go... Ooh, yeah, I'll get that 12%. Akira Zen. The news came out of Vinan has left the entire Republic paralyzed in shock and dismayed. Alexander Kamerskai suffered a heart attack at his estate this morning. Though his wife called for doctors quickly, there was nothing to be done by the time they arrived. At 1427, attended by his wife and his son, both. Alexander Kamerskai, hero and father of the Republic, passed away. President Heinrich Kingfeather received the news 38 minutes later, and the Parliament voted to disband for the day as their sign of respect. Flags are lowered to half-mast around the Republic, and condolences are beginning to flood in from across the world. After decades of trials and tra travails, or travails, from triumph to defeat and back again, Alexander Kemersky received less than enough time to spend with his family before time caught up with him. His wife was only asked that two ceremonies be held, one for the hero and statesman, and one for the once absent father and distant husband who, at the end, wanted nothing more than to make amends and be with his beloved family. A griffin dies, but the dream survives. Oh, Dabs, why do you have to do this? Why do you tug at the heartstrings? Why? <sighs> A griffin dies. Oh, why? Political power goes down by minus point two. No! Not the field marshal! No! No! His son's got a lot of... Uh, some big boots to fill. He is politically connected, which I don't think was very good to have. Especially since we just took out the nobility, but, you know, whatever. Um, not this guy. I don't like the minus 25%. I'm better with minus 10% than anything else, but I don't want to promote him just because uh, he's related, so... And these guys aren't... Oh, wrong group. Wrong person. Cheer and Stormfeather, just because, well... I don't want to have too many too many issues. Just enough. Just enough issues. Just enough. Cool. Ah, uh, we got some big daddy ships. But we don't have the best cannons yet, so. Ah, uh, President Camera Sky. Camera Sky passes away. The Republic will never forget its marshal. The Republic mourns in a great states griffin and leader is lost. Ugh. Why? Why do you have to do this to us? Why? Well, we're going to be warring off extremism and reconcile with these guys. Expelling the NRP left. Today, President Heinrich Kingfeather, a protector of the Grifonian Republic and member of the right-wing party of the National Republican Party, 
Hence today announced the expelling of the socialist faction of the party from the NRP. This faction, after finding themselves independent from the most powerful political party in all of Griffonia, initially splintered into many different warring factions. Eventually, days later, Redcard asked to form the socialist party of Griffonia, uniting syndicalist, democratic socialists, and even disaffected social democrats in a large Big Ten socialist party. With socialists purged from the party, the NRP has shifted to the right, and it will be much easier for us to pass our capitalist reforms. With a legal opposition, we can also begin further democratizing the Republic. The creation of a socialist opposition will be a stepping stone to the eventual building of the multi-party platform. Perfect. Cool. We really need more manpower. Uh, we're going to need some radar, too, for what we're going to do, maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Cool. And do that as well. Thank you very much. Uh, it's looking okay-ish. Because we still we can actually integrate some of these territories. Not all, but some of these, which, which is actually really good. Still have local autonomy in some places, which is fine. That's actually really nice having local autonomy, too. So... Um, I would love to do integration, but it is unfortunate that we cannot right now. Hey, look at that manpower! Oh. Cool. Give out pardons. We must respect Imperial politicians for their crimes and supporting the enemy during the Revolutionary War. All that matters now is that they are brought back into the fold. They know these lands, and we do not, so it is a pragmatic policy to crown the administrators of these new states. We get some more stability and more political power. Maybe. We'll see. Simon, very good. A few days left. We can wait a few days. We're going to get this one done first, which would be nice. And what do we have done? Ah, cruisers. Good. Um, yeah, get that one. Stuff. That, those ones are actually really good to get, too. Giving out pardons. And then a few days left. And we're just going to keep going down with this stuff. Better radar, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And now we can make some good stuff there. But I want to wait till we get that one, too, to really make those ships. So, I want the best. We deserve the best. Do we not? Yes, we do. At this point, heavy tanks. Ooh. Do that. Do that. Early tanks. Heavy tanks. There you go. That's going to hurt our chromium, but that's okay. Uh, crush fascist organizations. The Griffonian National Revolutionary Front, along with other banned organizations, have seen a resurgence in activity, especially when Kamerskaya made broad concessions to generals in an attempt to save the army. These organizations are unconstitutional and militarist. Unlike the socialists, there's not even a place for them in our opposition. No, 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 no. It's only 45 days. That's not too bad. Hey, look at that. Some more likers. Are very good. Well, they could be better, but whatever. We'll take them. For now now. Good. Alright, so we can get rid of this one. We'll start working on this one a little bit more. We need... Oh, god dang it. We need a lot more uh, naval XP. That sucks. We need more anti-air as well. Fire control zeros. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, we're not making that much naval XP. We need way more than this. Uh, I guess we can build like one, two for now. That'd be fine. Giving out the pardons. It's just fine. No time for vengeance, though. Uh, oh no, crush fascist organizations. Death charge throws are very good to get to. Let's get that one too. Awesome, awesome. Followed up with No Time for Vengeance. The radicals who cough for blood must be silenced, and peace and reason must reign in the Republic. There will be no executions, no prison for traitors. Instead, they will be rehabilitated. And someday, they will f we will forge a greater Griffonia and a grander Griffonia with them in tow. Whoa, look at that! Together for victory! I wonder if that's a DLC for Hearts of Iron 4, but daily political power gain plus 0.1, which is nice, even though we already get over 2 a day. 1.5% more recruitable population, which is great, and 7.5% construction speed. Exactly 7.5%. Nothing more, nothing less. Not bad. And look at all the areas that we, we can build roads in. I, I don't know. I'm sure it's already featured in the, like, supposed to be mirrored in the game, but I kind of wish roads could do more for you as well. I don't know. I like a GDP mechanic, I don't know. More roads. Sound like it costs more. But I might be able to make transportation between places much faster, right? I don't know. When's drone technology coming out in Equestria War? <laughs> Probably never. Mm, I'm going to wait for that one. Because now we got dual purpose. I love dual purpose. Dual purpose is so nice. So nice. Cool. And anti-air. We're going to put a lot of anti-air on here. Even though I'm not sure if it's really worth it. Um, yeah, it's better than heavy artillery guns. Secondary batteries. You know what? Let's get another one. Get more light attack. Screw it. You know, get radar too. That's fine. Go, go for. You know what? Get radar to air. Oh, Jesus! I got too. Ex I literally got too excited there. Holy crap! I'll get another one of these. That's fine. There you go. And that's fine. God dang it! I got too excited. I got really excited there. Crush these fascist organizations in no time for vengeance. Followed up with, in defense of Griffonia. Griffonia has to be defended from the monarchist menace. However, we must never strike foolhardily against the remaining monarchies, especially since we have defeated the Empire. We will defeat them in an end, but our focus must be always be on the civilian deployment. Oh, civilian deployment. Look at that. We just got a ton of manpower. Nice. And we just lost a whole bunch. Any manpower that we get, we're going to put in here. Um, obviously, I want garrisons to be high, but still. Nice.
I'll rename Vinin to Kemerskystadt. In order to honor Great President Marshall, we should rename Vinin Kemerskys home for decades before the Republican Revolution shattered Griffonia to its core. Absolutely. Absolutely. All or nothing cruiser armor scheme. Good, good, good. This is looking very good, actually. Um, how are planes? We could bet. Yeah, let's do some better planes. That'd be smart to do. No time for vengeance. And only about four days left, which is not too shabby, shabby, shabberinos. And then in defense of Griffonia. And then against the monarchies. You know, we're not going to go to war with them, but okay, whatever. We must march against the remaining monarchies and bring justice, peace, and harmony to all of Griffonia. The tricolor will soon reign in Cawthon, Aquilia, Kisivin, and Kaib. Nice. Um, we do just need some map art, so here's what we're going to do. Bye, 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 bye. Yeah, that's fine. There you go, that's enough. Well, maybe not. There you go. Can you go one? Yeah, that's fine. And I do want to go with another one, too. Because I want... Look at all, all the planes we have. Holy crap. Oh, look at our army. Here, you can... 32... Holy crap. That's a lot of planes. I'm not gonna lie. That's a lot of planes. I think I made maybe a few too many divisions, so... But then again, we're still demobilizing. Um... You know, I'll deal probably... Oh, maybe I'll do that with Oscar. Maybe I'll just do it here. I'll see. There you go. Death charge uh, throwers. Very good. Uh, let's go to the next one, too. Really, only need one, two, three. There you go. And then... It's fine. Take you, go back. There you go. Cool. So you guys will be fine. I want you guys to stop doing that. I mean, we're making a lot of visions. I'm just trying to save the manpower. That's all I'm trying to do right now. That's all I'm literally trying to do. Not too bad, though. And just in case up there as well. Nice. Alright. Oh, Simon. Simon. Butcher. Yes. And against the monarchies. Very good. Alright. Not bad. And I want you guys to be facing down these fine, totally fine folk right now. So we're going to need more generals and such. I mean, I, I, in the end, I might just delete all these you know, all these armies. So we'll see. So I there's no guarantees, but yeah, we'll see. Ferdinand Stebenklau and Karl Stebenklau. Oh, brothers! Good. So that's nice. We got those cruisers done. Do we get this stuff done? Yeah, we look like we did. Nice. Grab this dude. It's not bad. Uh, now can we finally do this? I'm glad we got Raider 3. Get that. And then get some of this. Battleship Armor 3. Yes. It's not 4, but whatever. Um, aircraft facilities are fine. Grab some more secondary batteries. Get some more anti-air, which I'm not sure if it's really worth it anymore. But we'll do it anyways, because I don't want our speed to be too slow. So. Oh my god, we're so close. We're so bad we're close. So bad we're close. Come on, man. You know, instead of that, that anti-air, just get more surface detection. There you go. Make it. Uh, we're out of manpower too, which is unfortunate. So do that, do that, do that. Nice. All right. Oh God, we just. Uh, uh, why'd you do it to us, please? Why? Actually, it's probably good to start doing some of this stuff. Nice, nice, nice. Good, good. Oh, how much are you? Are we out? Oh, well, that's. That's a good amount. Alright, so then so be it. Liberate the Hurst. The kingdom of Christenstone, along with the house of Avian Air and Irie, have reigned as monarchies for decades. They will soon set the, see the light of the people, or the Republic. Followed up with New Griffinstone? Oh. Griffinstone controls it. Griffinstone was once the capital of the Great Griffonian Empire, when it was unified by the first Grover under using the idol of Boreas. Being such a heart of monarchism, it was understandable that we should rebuild this land and make it a true model Republican province. Recognize and independent. Well, Aquilia assisted us in the great campaign to destroy the Empire. As such, we will let them retain their autonomy as long as they remain open part of our faction. And never intend to break the bonds to guide us together in harmony and solidarity. And if you want to read about that, please go ahead. Yeah, they're, they're dead, so. Um. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to read this one later. Probably so. 
We'll see what happens. That's unfortunate for them, but you know they chose their fate. They chose their fate, and they are gonna sow the seeds of the decisions. What we're going to do is liberate Aquilia. The Griffins of the West have long struggled for freedom against their incompetent and power-hungry monarchs. These Griffins deserve vindication and the ultimate triumph of liberty over tyranny. We're still demobilizing. That sucks. But that's not too bad. Magic equipment. I probably I don't ever use the magic equipment. Do you guys use magical equipment? Let me know in the comments below. Do you guys use it? Do you find it very extremely necessary to use, or do you just use it for like role playing? Let me know in the comments below because I, I I'd like to know what you guys use here. So. Look at RPP. It is just so much. And then oil. Ooh, oil fields. You don't need that. Um, if you want to read this one, please go ahead. We can't really do that one, so. The king of wing body is dead. The soldier king has fought to his last battle. How sad. Oh well. Down with the monarchies. Alright. Well, we might as well go to four now, alright? I know it's going to hurt us a little bit, but that's alright. That's okay. Get rid of that. We're gonna max these babies out. And then we have 24, so we get rid of this and literally get rid of all this crap. It's all crap. Um, light, Jesus Christ. Go, dual purpose would be nice. Let's go to light battery fours. One is fine. This one's fine. This one, four is fine, whatever. Um, just gonna give an eye on how much stuff we actually have here. Level four would be good. Nice. I don't think we can convert this, can we? You can remove it. Um, oh no, you can. Nice. Nice. Oh wait, we're still not done yet? Oh yeah. There we go. Pretty good. Liberate Aquilia. We'll see what happens. And I guess camera Sky. Eh, yeah, camera Sky. Just let him do that. Let him do his thing, I guess. If he needs to. If he needs to. Tactical bombers. I don't believe in tactical bombers here. Um, we're going to need some bigger air bases as well. Like with, I threw 3,200 planes on one group. That's insane. And I was told, like in a previous campaign in Equestria War, that nukes cost like crystals, so we don't want to use too many of them. So, and oil fields in Greifwald. The Greifwaldian oil fields are a valuable asset, but the wells currently are in place are obsolescent, and extraction could be greatly improved. The potential uh, strategic value of these reserves cannot be uh, overstated. Good. That's good. Um, let's keep going down this way, at least way this way for once, and we can keep doing research. I'll do more research. That's a little bit ahead of time. Let's do some decryption. That'd be good. All right, after that avenge Gilead's betrayal. Um, let's do this one. Western reconstruction campaign. No matter if Aquila is under the control of our al us or our allies, it's clear that we must pursue a broad reconstruction campaign to heal the land, especially major cities, from imperial terror campaigns and the Second Revolution. Ah, finally, butcher. Actually, get some good planes. Good stuff. So close air support go here. Heavy tanks become modern tanks. And actually, since we have so much armor, or so much army XP, one, two, one, two. Four, I like that a lot. How high can we go? Five? That would hurt our speed, so. As long as everything's getting a benefit, I'm kind of okay with this. Get a lot of modern tanks. Wait, what the heck? No, I want, what the heck? Well, that sucks, but whatever. Anything else besides the ship? Nope, just a ship. Cool. And I think... So we're going to do this one, and we'll read one more before we end the campaign. Or not the campaign, the episode, because tomorrow we'll, we'll go to war with a lot of... We might have two more episodes after this, actually. Tragically, despite their wealth and opulence, the trade cities of Skyfall and Fezera grew into havens for crime and corruption, and inevitably betrayed the dream of a republic free and secure. Under a positive influence, we will ensure that Skyfall rises again as a model republican city. Very good. So do both these as well. Good. But if you enjoyed this episode, my friends, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we have amassed a tremendously huge army and as we continue to work on our intelligence agency. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a great, great rest of your day.